Did you know that your brain holds 20% of your body's total cholesterol, even though the brain itself is just 2% of your body weight? That's how important cholesterol is. Breast milk, the very first food of life, is loaded with it. Cholesterol is also the raw material for some of the most powerful hormones in the body, things like estrogen, testosterone, and cortisol. It's essential for making vitamin D. It forms the foundation of bile salts, which helps you digest fat. And here's something interesting. Your liver can make up to 60 to 80% of the cholesterol in your body, depending on how much you get from your food. So basically, when you get more cholesterol from uh, food, your liver produces less of it and vice versa. So let me ask you again, why would your body make something that is harmful? The truth is simple. Cholesterol is not the enemy. In fact, it plays a huge role in healing and repair. So this video is your master guide. It's the only video you need to watch to truly make sense of cholesterol and all those terms you have heard tossed around LDL, HDL, VLDL and more. The first marker is total cholesterol. This is simply the sum of all cholesterol being carried in your blood, that is uh, LDL, HDL, VLDL and the rest. Total cholesterol alone is an outdated way to judge heart risk. What really matters are the detailed markers and the ratios we'll get into shortly. That said, total cholesterol isn't useless. For example, if it's very low, it can point to problems like hormone deficiencies, poor fat absorption, or nervous system imbalance. Most labs say that the normal range is 125 to 200. Some research even shows that totals up to 250 can be healthy, but only when other markers like HDL and triglycerides are in balance. Let's move on to LDL cholesterol. LDL cholesterol is often labeled bad cholesterol, but that's an oversimplification. Its primary job is transport, carrying cholesterol from the liver to the tissues where it is needed for repair, hormone production and healing. So LDL itself isn't bad, but excess or damaged LDL is what raises cardiovascular risk. Less than 100 is generally labeled as optimal. However, in context, levels up to 130 are not automatically concerning provided HDL is strong, triglycerides are controlled, and APOB count is reasonable. So the real insight comes from looking at LDL alongside the rest of the lipid panel, not in isolation.